If you were thinking about moving to St. Augustine, Florida, you're probably wondering what the crime is like here. I mean, that's a big thing. Whenever you move to a brand new area, you want to make sure that it's going to be safe for you and your family. What's up, everyone? This is Thomas with Real Broker here in St. Augustine, Florida. And if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida, make sure you reach out to me and my team. All we try to do is give you the information so that you can make an educated decision on what you already want to do, which is buy, sell, or invest in real estate here in Northeastern Florida. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is take a look at all the major crimes that have happened in this year. We're also gonna take a look at St. Johns County's crime and population per capita. And then we're also going to compare St. Johns County, which is where St. Augustine's located, to every other notable county that you might know of. You know, we're gonna talk about Duval County, Flagler County, Putnam County, which are the counties that surround us. But I also wanna compare it to cities like Miami and Tampa and Orlando, just so you have a good idea of the differences of of your lifestyle and the crime here in St. Johns County versus all those other places. And guys, if you're looking for more in-depth information on the safety of St. Augustine, I actually have a about an hour long interview with the St. Johns County Sheriff, uh, Rob Hardwick, who I met for the first time then, and I got a really great impression of how he's treating his officers and his outlook on St. Johns County and how safe it is. So if you're looking for more information like that, make sure you check out the interview above. It is a little lengthy, but there's some really good stuff in there. So let's start off by taking a look at the major news stories regarding the crime here within St. Augustine. And in the city of St. Augustine, which is the downtown historical area of St. John's County, is going to be the area where most of the crime is located. Now, a lot of this stuff is, is pretty petty. It comes down to like theft. And that's because there's a lot of tourism down there. There's a lot of people that are on vacation. They got the, the rose colored glasses on and they're not worried about too much. And that's where you're gonna see the majority of the crime. There's not gonna really be too many you know, double homicide, murder, shootings, all that kind of stuff within St. John's County. It's just not something that happens here very often, uh, but we are gonna cover a couple situations here that you should know about and be informed about if you are looking to move to the area. So let's take a look at our first news story here. Now in this news story, this happened a couple months ago and this is in the city of St. Augustine where this, where this happened and it was a, a city worker that was out doing their job and we only have a little clip of the video. Um, where they show that there is a group of kids actually beating up on this employee. For what reason, I don't know. I'm not sure. They haven't really released any information regarding that. Let's take a look here um, at what happened. Um, and, and there's not much information to go off of. It's, it's a cell phone footage video. Very tough to see. Um, but you can see two people scrambling on the ground here. It looks like there's like four or five kids. And that's one thing to mention as well. Downtown St. Augustine has Flagler College, right? So you do have some kids getting drunk, getting rowdy and uh, causing a ruckus, which is what this looks like to me. Um, that also looks like a younger person here. So snuck them up from behind there, not exactly ideal. Um, but this is one of the, the major crimes that I've seen this year. Now, if you are out and about late at night, you are going to find things like that because unfortunately, there's just kids that are young and dumb and they're full of testosterone or whatever, and they got to prove something. I was there at one point, you know, I've never beat up a city worker, though. Um, but hopefully he's making a full recovery, probably getting a settlement from the city of St. Augustine as well. So maybe some money in his pocket. Um, but that is something to be aware of. We have Flagler College down there. You have young kids that are getting drunk, doing stupid stuff, doing drugs, all that kind of stuff. It's part of the culture of college, right? It's not a secret. It's the same thing in any college town. It's no different here in St. Augustine. Let's go take a look at the next news story that I have for you. Okay, St. Augustine Marine's death ruled self-inflicted deputies had open fire on him. Um, so this happened on June 7th. Uh, the reason they, they found out is a concerned family member contacted the sheriff's office shortly after 5 p.m. saying he left home with a firearm and had been drinking alcohol and making suicidal threats. They located him in a pickup truck on Old Moultrie Road at US 1 South and attempted to communicate with him when he began to ram one of the patrol vehicles. And the sheriff's office said four deputies started shooting, but Heron fired what was determined to be the fatal blow according to the findings. Um, court records show he was institutionalized under the Baker Act in July 2023 for um, threatening suicide. He was upset that a loved one wanted him to contact the veteran suicide hotline. He told deputies multiple times that he was trained in Marines and had guns. He also had been drinking fireball all day and wanted them to try to take him out. Sheriff's office was advised he suffered from bipolar disorder. So unfortunately, this is just a mental health crisis here. And I think that's something that uh, we've been seeing across not only you know, the nation, but here in St. John's County, uh, especially since the pandemic, it seems that we have seen a lot more of these in instances where you're seeing assisted suicide, someone killing themselves and killing someone else. And 
um, just a murder suicide, not assisted suicide. Um, and that's something that, you know, St. John's County is no different. You have people just like this. Um, obviously I didn't see the coroner's report. I imagine when he started ramming the, the police, they shot at him and he probably had a couple bullet holes in him, but ultimately maybe he decided to kill himself after or before he was shot. Hard to say, um, or maybe he shot himself and then drove into the police vehicles, but that's something that you definitely don't see too often here, but just want to make sure you guys know about this kind of stuff. But I imagine, and just let me know in the comments below, is this something that you see in your area? Is it something that you've seen an uptick, an uptrend of the last couple of years? Uh, seems that from, from my perspective, I feel that way, but I'm not sure what you guys think. But let's go ahead and get on to the next news story here and share my screen again. So this case was dismissed and attorney states it was a clear case of racial profiling and discrimination. Um, and the body cam shows arrest of Guatemalan who can't understand commands by St. John's County deputies. Uh, Virgilio Ag Aguilar Mendez is shown struggling with deputies and being tased before Sergeant Michael Kunovich goes into medical distress. Um, so he was actually charged with aggravated manslaughter of an officer. But when this happened, the officer actually had an, a heart attack during the altercation. So this Guatemalan man didn't speak any English. He's getting in an altercation with this police officer where you shouldn't resist arrest. But, you know, maybe he didn't understand anything. Maybe he had a different, different uh, association with the police where he came from. I don't know. But either way, he ended up getting charged with aggravated manslaughter against this police officer because he did have a heart attack and died during this altercation. And it's been a big deal here in St. John's County in terms of who is right, who is wrong in the situation. But to charge him for something that, like, I mean, you know, obviously your adrenaline's high, your 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 blood is pumping during that. So uh, for the, the officer to have a heart attack, you know, rest in peace, all the condolences to his family. I don't know if it's necessary for that kid to get charged with that manslaughter case. Um, but that's something that has happened here. Let's head on to the next news story. Okay, 14,500 reward offered for information related to unsolved St. Augustine double homicide. Coney Bettit and Trey Lyons were found in a car um, where they were both shot. The, the car was uh, shooting around 11.30 p.m. on November 27th on North Orange Street near Webster Elementary School. When they arrived, they found a vehicle which had crashed into a fence with two men inside who had died from apparent gunshot injuries. Uh, no arrests have been made. No suspects have been located. They said this is an isolated incident. Court records show Bennett was set to be sentenced on December 6 after pleading guilty to selling meth to an undercover officer in December of 2021. In October, he had pleaded no contest to an accusation of shooting at someone during confrontation. Um, so this is something that, unfortunately, it, it happens, you know, and uh, I, this is not normal at all. Whenever I saw that news story, and I don't live to, might live a mile from that location here. Um, I was very surprised. And actually, I went to go take a walk because they said that this car crashed into a fence and I wanted to see what had happened. I'm kind of nosy like that in my neighborhood, I guess like any any neighbor would be. Um, and yeah, so I went to go take a walk and actually I think it was ABC News or maybe it was uh, News 4 Jax. I'm not sure. One of, one of the news crews were walking around and trying to interview people like, oh, is this a normal thing? What's going on? You were concerned about this. And they tried to interview me and I was just like, I didn't give them anything. I was like, I don't know. I wasn't here, you know, like this is not definitely not something you hear about all the time here in St. John's County, like shootings and murders. That's not something that we're accustomed to here. So uh, they didn't put me on the news, unfortunately, but uh, I would have hopefully I had the hat on, got the brand, but um, rest in peace um, to their families and everything. I know it's tough losing people, even though obviously they, they you know, he's doing some criminal activities. Let's look at the next news story here, guys. And I got two more for you. St. John's County matches three years worth of deputy shootings with third in 2024. So after having just one shooting by a St. John's County deputy in each of the last three years, Time Union records show the sheriff's office has already equaled the total so far this year with its third occurring Friday evening. Um, so this is one that we already covered, the one on Old Moultrie with uh, the, the man who committed suicide. There was another one that's technically it was it happened to St. John's County officers, but um, but it actually happened in Duval County, and they say that right here. So not exactly the most um, upfront headline. Of course, they always try to embellish things uh, to make things seem worse. Um, and the other shooting happened just three days later on May 24th when a 29-year-old Matthew Ross Dalton was, was wounded following a traffic pursuit. Um, so not, not typical to see things like that here in St. John's County. Um, and it's, it's very interesting uh, to, to see that stuff happen, especially when it comes down to like 
someone's kill. You know, it seems that all these things are related to mental health issues. And I don't know if that's just a trend here in St. John's County, or if there's something that nationally has happened. I feel like COVID kind of messed up a lot of things for a lot of people, whether it was financially or mental health wise. So we got to keep that in mind. And this one is actually something that made national news. Um, didn't happen here in St. Augustine, but a St. Augustine man did this. You guys are probably familiar with this. So let's go on to the last news story before we go into the data. St. Augustine man dies after setting himself on fire outside New York courthouse for Trump case. Um, he uh, obviously set himself on fire, Max Azzarello, 37 of St. Augustine, um, and he doused himself with an accelerant and set himself on fire around 135 across the street from the courthouse and collect pond court. Um, once again, that, that didn't happen here, but um, kind of goes into what I was just talking about. It seems to be that there is a mental health crisis in our country here and in St. John's County um, that maybe we're not addressing. And that probably all stems from COVID. A lot of that um, probably peaked during COVID because of being isolated, not being able to talk to people, financial stresses, familial stresses, maybe some, one of your family members died, someone you love and support you. Who knows? But we're seeing things like this. And these are the major crimes that are happening here in St. John's County. Outside of that, I mean, it's mostly petty theft. Um, but I just want to make sure that, hey, if you're looking here and you want all the information, I'm going to bundle it up. Here, take it. This is this is what we have. So just being as upfront as possible with you guys. So let's go ahead and take a look at the population of St. John's County and how things have changed over the years, um, just so you can get an idea of like what's happening in St. John's County on the population side and per capita of how many crimes are happening. Okay, so this is from uh, the, the state of Florida. So you can see Florida Department of Law Enforcement up here at the, the URL, the statewide county report. So they break everything down by county and we're gonna be using the same spreadsheet that you can get on their website, of course, or if you'd like, you can reach out to me and I'll send it to you. We're gonna be using the same spreadsheet to kind of compare and contrast. But I first wanted to highlight St. John's County, show you what's going on here. So we have St. John's County right down here and then we have the population in this column here, total crime index. And what we wanna take a look at is crime rate per 100,000 population and the percentage change. Okay, so this is the most updated report they have. It's from 2021. Um, so this is the most relevant information that I could get to you. So we will take a look at the population as well, just so you can kind of see that this, these numbers are gonna be a little different, um, especially because our population has boomed pretty significantly. Um, we were the fastest growing county in 2021 and 2022. We had a 12% increase year over year. Um, well, in that total. So 6% each year we, we grew. But if you look at St. John's County here, uh, so St. John's County had a population in 2021 of 285,000 people. And then when we take a look at the total crime index, they have 1,903 crimes. If we go over to the uh, crime rate per 100,000 in population, and sorry, this, uh, this is right here, I believe. Yep. Okay. So per 100,000 people in 2021, we saw a pretty significant decrease. In 2020, it was 979 per 100,000, and now we're at 666. So we're down 32% um, from 2020 to 2021. But I don't know if this is going to show differently when we talk about you know, the population, because the population increased. And we also, just everything we covered here, the mental health issues that were associated with the pandemic, did they spark something else? And that's something I, I don't have the data on, um, but I imagine that crime either went up, went back to like, you know, up 32% and kind of leveled out there. Um, but I don't think anything's gone crazy here. I just want to be direct with the information. So let's take a look at the population. We got the U.S. Census Bureau here. Um, that talks about St. John's County. This is, once again, not the most updated information. I have another slide here that gives us a little bit more, but in the population of uh, 2020, they said there was 273,000 people. Um, income was around 103,000 per household. And uh, the other census data that I have, or the other data I found online, is from World Population Review, and says that at, right now we're at 333,000 people. And if you're living here in St. Augustine, it definitely feels that way. You know, our population has spiked tremendously. I moved here in the late 90s when I was a kid. And as you can see, it's pretty much just gone up like a rocket ship since then. It's a really cool area to live. Um, so back in 2010, our population was 191,000. And in 20 years, at 2029, they're expecting it to be 398,000. So our population is expected to double in that time, which is uh, pretty significant. But as of right now, we're at 333,000 people. And I imagine that the crime rate is probably in line with that, right around 1%. Um, if you looked at the other one, uh, I think per, per capita, per 100,000 people, we had 979 crimes in 2020. 
And then in 2021, we had 606 crimes per 100,000 people. So I'm guessing that's about 1% of our population. So around 3,000 um, or per 100,000 people is about 3,000 crimes is what I'm, I'm guessing. So now that we covered that, what I want to do is I want to take a look at St. John's County versus the north of us, which is Duval County, Jacksonville, large metropolitan area. We also want to take a look at Putnam County. That's to the west of us. Uh, more of a rural area, Palatka being the main city there. And then south of us, we have Flagler County, Flagler Beach, Palm Coast uh, being the main areas in Flagler County. And I want to take a look at that and compare and contrast the crime, crime rate per 100,000 people um, within the area here. So you have an idea that St. John's County might be the best move for you within our area. So as we saw before, we have St. John's County here with a population of 285,000 people in 2021 with 666 crimes per 100,000 people in 2021. So if we scroll up and we take a look at Duval County, which is Jacksonville, a much bigger area, but in 2021, they had roughly a million people there. And per 100,000 people, they actually don't have the data, which doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies. Okay, so let's take a look at St. John's County. As we covered before, in 2021, they had a population of 285,000 people with 665 crimes per 100,000 people. Now, if we compare Duval County, which is north of us, that's going to be Jacksonville. If you're familiar with that city, pretty much encompasses all of Duval County. In 2021, they had about a million people. And they actually don't have a crime rate per 100,000 in 2021, which, you know, if they're not reporting it, kind of doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies. But if you compare St. John's County um, in 2020, we had about 900, uh, almost 1,000 crimes per 100,000 people. And in Duval County, they have about 3,500 crimes per 100,000 people, which... Uh, is not exactly what you want to see. Now let's go ahead and we'll compare that to Flagler County since that's right here. Population of Flagler County in 2021 was 120,000 people and they're pretty much in line with what we had uh, per 100,000 people. They have 969 crimes. So about 1,000 crimes per 100,000. So once again, going in that 1%, whereas Duval County is really at that 3.5% of 100,000 people in terms of crimes. Um, They've gone down 2.8% year over year, which is good. Now, once again, this is older data, but I imagine it's probably closer to, to in line than, than it's not. Well, let's take a look at Putnam County. So we're gonna scroll down Putnam County. If you've, you've looked at P uh, Palatka, this is where Putnam County is going to come into play. So Putnam County in 2021 had 73,000 people, um, went from 73,700 to 73,673. Um, and their crime went from 2,031 crimes in 2020 to 1,608 in 2021 per 100,000 people. So they actually went down about 20% in their crime rate year over year. Now, Putnam County, Palatka has grown pretty significantly. I have, I have a lot of content regarding that. Um, in regard, my sister moved to Palatka, my, one of my best friends here in Florida moved to Palatka, and they actually really enjoy it. They think it's a great place. They, they say it reminds them of what St. Augustine used to be when we were kids, which is back in the 90s and early 2000s. Seeing that trend go down, I imagine that it's going to continue to go down, especially as Putnam County kind of benefits from the growth of Florida overall, the growth of St. John's County, Flagler, and Duval County. If you're priced out of those areas, you're more than likely moving west over the St. John's River. Um, and commuting over to the area. So um, Putnam County looks like they're making some good strides. So now let's compare this to the other notable cities that you guys know about. We're talking about Orlando, Tampa, and Miami. And just to give you a good idea of what's going on there. Okay, so let's take a look at Tampa, which is gonna be Hillsborough County. So these are much bigger areas than St. John's County, but very similar in line to Duval County, but this will give you a good idea. So. 1.5 million people in 2021, a little bit less than that in 2020. As you know, we know we know Tampa has blown up in these last couple of years. But if you take a look at the crime rate per 100,000 population in Hillsborough, they reported in 2020 that they had about 1,400 crimes per 100,000 people. So significantly less than Duval County, significantly more than St. John's County. Um, and they don't have any data for 2021. So I'm not sure if it's just they didn't report that year or what happened, but they don't have any data for there. But um, yeah, they have about the same as what we're seeing, around 1% of the 100,000 people. Outliers would be the Duval County area. Okay, now let's take a look at the Miami-Dade County. So we got it right here. Uh, in 2021, their population was 273,000 people, actually down from 2020 at 283,000 people. 
Um, so a 7% change in year over year. And their crime went down as well. So it was around 2,800 crimes to 2,700 crimes. It went down 4.2% from 2020 to 2021, and that's per 100,000 people. So at that point, they're almost at 3%. So they're more in line with a Duval County than St. John's County. They're pretty much double or triple what we'd see in terms of crime here in St. John's County, which I think is a good indicator. All right, and now let's take a look at Orange County, which is gonna be Orlando. So we're gonna scroll down here. Now, once again, these areas are much, much bigger than St. John's County, so take that into consideration. So in 2021, Orlando had 1.45 million people. They had a increase of you know about 40,000 people year over year. And then if you look at their crime, Per 100,000 people in 2021, they have 2,500 crimes per 100,000 people. So around 2.5% of that 100,000 people are committing crimes, which is not ideal. Once again, pretty much double, triple of what St. John's County is, but in line with these major metropolitan areas. We talked about Duval County. We talked about Miami-Dade County. We talked about Tampa. Pretty much in line with what those are going to be, and, and Duval County being uh, the worst per capita out of all of them. So with that being said, I, I think the major thing, especially if you're looking in you know, our area of northeastern Florida, there's a lot of great places in Duval County that you can live that you don't even worry about crime at all. You leave your doors unlocked. It's not going to be a problem. There's a lot of places in that area that you don't want to go to, right? And I think that's important to know. And a lot of that, if you just look at price points, you're going to figure out where the, the worst areas are than the better areas, right? And when you're looking at St. John's County comparatively to Duval County, you're looking at Miami, you're looking at Tampa, Orlando, it beats out all of them in terms of the crime. It's, it's doing much, much better. And from my personal opinion here, when you're going around St. John's County, um, you can't go five, 10 minutes driving on the road without seeing two or three cop cars. They have a ton of police in the area. I think in total, their staff is around um, 600 officers with around 300 people of support staff. So they really have a ton of people working here in St. Johns County, which I think is a benefit to many of the residents here. Makes you feel safe. Also, a lot of our police officers look like ex-UFC fighters or NFL linemen. They're all about six foot two, huge jacked arms, tattoos all down them. Super nice guys, um, at least from my experience. But uh, they, they're definitely, uh, you know, almost looks like all of them came from some type of military service or some type of athletic background because these guys are humongous and I'm not just exaggerating that. So guys, I want to wrap this up and put a bow on it. St. John's County overall is probably one of the safest, best areas to live in the entire state of Florida when you're looking at the data here. If you want this data, reach out to me directly. I can email it over to you, or you can find it at the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. They have all that information up there as well. Or you can check out St. John's County's uh, government website too. They have all that information on there too. So if you are looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida, make sure you reach out to me and my team directly. All we try to do is give you the information just like we did here today so that you can make an educated decision on what you wanna do. If you wanna move to Jacksonville, you wanna move to Flagler County, Putnam County, we got your back. Whether you're buying, selling, or investing, let us know and we can help you out. Until next time, guys.